Hi. Now in an earlier tutorial what I showed you was that if you had a curve of the form y equals ax to the power n then we could work out the gradient of the curve at any point xy which was given as the gradient of the tangent by what was called the gradient function. It turned out to be an x to the power n minus 1. But I didn't give you any proof of this. I just kind of said accept it. Well, What I want to do in this tutorial is show you how we derive this type of formula from terms of the form ax to the power n. It's often referred to as differentiation by first principles. So what we'll do is we'll start by just looking at a very simple curve y equals x squared. Now suppose we took a very simple curve like y equals x squared and we we're after finding the gradient at the point 2, 4 on the curve. Well it's going to be exactly the same as the gradient of the tangent at that point. Now what I can do is look at another point on the curve. Let's say that we take this point up here. Let's say it's got an x-coordinate of 3. Then the corresponding y-coordinate would be 3 squared. 3 squared being 9. Now if I draw a line from here to here, it's called a chord. And I'm going to work out the gradient of this chord you can see it's steeper than the gradient of the tangent but you'll see why we work out the gradient of chords as we progress through this tutorial. So to get the gradient of the chord I need to do the difference in the y values and divide it by the difference in the x values. So that gradient will be equal to, we'll just write grad for short, difference in the y values, 9 take away 4 divided by the difference in the x values, 3 take away 2. So we get 5 over 1, which is 5. So the gradient of our chord is 5. Clearly a lot steeper than the gradient of the tangent. Now let's draw the curve again. And this time we'll take a point closer to 2, 4. Let's say it's this point here. It's got an x-coordinate, say, of 2.5. The corresponding y-coordinate here would be 2.5 squared, which is 6.25. And if we draw the chord in this time and work out the gradient, that gradient is now not as steep as the gradient we had here. We'll work it out anyway. What's it going to be? Well, it's going to be the difference in the y values, 6.25, take away the 4. And divide that by the difference in the x values, 2.5, take away the 2. If you work this out, you get 4.5 as the gradient of the chord. So you can see it's coming down from the 5. It's getting closer to the gradient of the tangent. So if we're to get the gradient to the tangent, then we should make this point get closer and closer to the point 2, 4. Well, let's just try that. The only problem is, though, in a question like this, I have to use my imagination now and think of a point really close to 2, 4. I've got to magnify the curve, though. So let's just imagine that this is our point here. And the coordinates of that point, we take an x value so close to the 2. Let's say 2.0001. To get the y value, we square this value and it comes out as 4.0004.0001. So that when we join the two points together, getting our chord, the gradient of this chord is going to tend towards the gradient of the tangent. And that gradient in this example is going to be again the difference in the y values. Now I haven't got much room here so can you see that if you were to subtract 4 from this y value here you'd end up with 
0.0004001. And if you divide that by the difference in the x values, you'll get 0.0001 as the difference in those x values. The final result turns out to be 4.0001, very close to 4. Now suppose we look at the curve again, but this time we take a general point that is a distance h from this point 24. Let's just mark that in as h. So the x coordinate at this point here is going to be 2 plus h. Let's mark that in, 2 plus h. But what about the y-coordinate? Well, the y-coordinate here has got to be 2 plus h all squared. So we'll put that in as 2 plus h all squared. So that's our x and y-coordinate for this point here. And if we look at the gradient of the chord, that gradient is going to be given by doing the difference in the y-coordinates, which will be 2 plus h all squared minus the 4 here all divided by the difference in the x coordinates 2 plus h minus 2 2 plus h minus 2 now if we were to expand the top what we get is 4 plus 2h plus another 2h that's plus 4h plus h squared and then minus the 4 all divided by h and if we clean this up we end up with 4h plus h squared because the 4's cancel so 4h plus h squared divided by h 4h plus h squared divided by h and the h's cancel h is in both of these two terms. So what we get is 4 plus h. Now what we do, this is the clever bit, we let this point get closer and closer to the 2, 4, which means that this width here, h, gets smaller and smaller. So we let h tend to 0. So if we let h tend to 0, and it's written like this, the gradient of the chord tends towards the gradient of the tangent. And what we have is that the gradient of that tangent will be 4 because h will tend to 0. So we can just say let h tend to 0 so therefore the gradient of the tangent equals 4. I think that's quite clever actually. Now what we can do is we can generalize this even further. Now instead of this point being 2, 4, let's just take a general point. Its x coordinate is going to be x and its y coordinate is going to be x squared. And if we took another point further away, as we did before, where the distance that it's away is h. So we create this triangle here. This point here is going to have an x-coordinate of x plus h, and its corresponding y-coordinate will be this value squared. So it'll be x plus h all squared. So that's the coordinates then of this point. And if we were to work out the gradient of the chord, in the usual way, that gradient of the chord, let's just write in the word chord this time, is going to be the difference in the y values. So it's going to be x plus h all squared minus the x squared here, all divided by the difference in the x coordinates x plus h minus the x. And what does that give us? 
Well, if we were to expand this bracket, we're going to have x squared plus xh and another xh, that would be 2xh, plus h squared, and then minus the x squared on the end. All divided by, and the denominator just comes to h. And so if we clean this up, the x squareds cancel, and we end up with 2xh plus h squared, all divided by h. And if we cancel each term here with the h, we then get 2x plus h. Now this is the gradient of the chord. But as we've seen, what we do is just let this point get closer and closer to this point here by letting h tend to 0. So if we were to let h tend to 0, we get that the gradient of the tangent, let's just write it in, gradient of tangent is letting h tend to 0. And what we have is that this equals 2x because that value is going to be 0, just simply 2x. So can you see that when x had a value of 2, when we were doing 2, 4, the gradient would be 2 times 2 at that point, 4. So this gives us the general formula for any point this time now on the curve y equals x squared. And what we say for the gradient of the tangent, that this is normally called dy by dx for the curve y equals x squared. This gives us the gradient of the tangent at any point x. It's called the gradient function. Now do you notice then that when we had y equals x squared, going back to the formula I said earlier, that if you had y equals ax to the power n, dy by dx turned out to be a n x to the power n minus 1. So when we've got y equals x squared, which is really a 1 times x squared, it follows that dy by dx would be equal to 2 times the 1, 2, reduce the power by 1, and you get x to the power 1, or 2x. So you can see it works. Now, what I would encourage you to do is to try this for curves like y equals x cubed. Take a general point on your curve, x and then x cubed. This point would be x plus h, and this would be x plus h all cubed. Do x plus h all cubed minus x cubed, all over x plus h minus x, see what you get. You'll find you end up with 3x squared. So you can build up this general result. So I hope that's given you some idea of how we can differentiate from first principles. But I leave it up to you to experiment with further functions along these principles. Alright?